In our introduction to chromatography, we said that chromatography is basically a technique that is used in analytical chemistry that allows us to separate our products down in a mixture. Now, one very important and useful type of chromatography technique is known as TLC or thin layer chromatography. Now, thin layer chromatography uses a solid stationary phase and a liquid mobile phase and for that reason the TLC technique is also known as the liquid solid phase chromatography technique. So thin layer chromatography basically allows us a relatively quick way to separate our products found in a mixture and then that allows us to analyze those products individually. So let's take a look at the overview that is let's take a look at what our thin layer chromatography technique actually consists of. So basically we take a solid plastic plate and that solid plastic plate acts as the stationary phase. Next we take a pipette and we basically pick up a very small amount of our sample of the mixture that is usually found in the liquid phase and we spot our plate at one end of that plate. So basically we place a very small spot of sample onto one end of our stationary phase solid rectangular plastic plate. That plate is then immersed or placed inside a beaker that contains our mobile phase that is usually in the liquid form. So this is shown in the following diagram. So this spot is the small amount of mixture that has been placed onto our plate. This is our plastic plate that acts as the stationary phase and this is our beaker. Now once we place it inside we have to seal that beaker to establish a saturated atmosphere. Now notice a very important point about this technique. So the level of our spot has to be above the level of the mobile phase. If that is not true, if the spot is found below the level of the mobile phase, what happens is the sample found on that spot completely dissociates into our solution, into our mobile phase solvent. And that means no separation will occur at the end of our experiment. Now this solvent, also known as the mobile phase, has two very important names that are usually used. So the solvent or the mobile phase is usually called the eluant or the eluting solvent. Now what exactly happens once we take the plate, put it inside and seal our container? So basically once the plate is placed into the eluant, the eluant or the solvent begins to travel up the plate. Now as it travels up the plate, eventually it reaches our small amount of mixture and that small amount of mixture basically mixes in with that solvent, with the eluting solvent that is traveling up along our plate. Now once it mixes in, it also begins to travel or ascend along our plate. Now the rate at which our compounds or products found inside the mixture travel along our plate depends on the affinity or the attraction of those compounds to the stationary phase, our plastic plate. So we see that the compounds that form stronger bonds to our plastic plate are those compounds that will have a lower rate. They will move up the plate at a lower rate compared to those compounds that do not form very strong bonds with the stationary plate and so the rate for those compounds will be much greater. Now once our 
polluting solvent once the LU want reaches near the top of our plate, our seal is removed and the plate is removed from our mobile phase and then the spots are analyzed. So let's suppose originally within our small amount of mixture, we only had two types of products, two types of compounds. So once we carry out the thin layer chromatography and we remove that plate, we get the following picture. So basically we have the following plates. This dashed line represents the spot line. It's the line where our mixture began to travel from. That's given by this uh, portion here, this line here. So basically as our solvent, as the eluting solvent begins to travel up, it begins to move these compounds up along the ascending uh, plate or the ascending uh, mobile phase. So basically the product that forms stronger bonds with the stationary plate will move with a smaller rate, will move with a lower velocity. And so at the end of our experiment, the spot that is lower designates the product that forms stronger bonds. And the spot that is higher basically designates our compound, the product that forms weaker bonds with our plates. Now this line is known as the solvent line or the eluant line and then designates the height or the distance that was traveled by the mobile phase by our solvent. So once again the spot line designates where the sample began while the eluant line designates where the mobile phase ends. Now we can define a quantity known as the retention factor which basically measures how well our product attracts to our mobile phase. And this is given by this equation. So the retention factor RF is equal to the ratio of the distance that the compound traveled divided by the distance that our solvent has traveled. So the spot line designates the origin. So we don't use the bottom of the plate as the origin but rather we use the spot line as the origin. And so the distance that is traveled by our solvent is given by the difference between this and this. So this is how far our solvent has traveled. It's the distance between these dashed lines. Now the distance that product 1 has traveled is this distance and the distance that product 2 has traveled is this distance. So we see that the greater the retention factor is the higher the rate at which the product has traveled up and so the lower or the weaker the forces are the attractive forces between the product and our stationary phase or stationary stationary phase our plastic plate so to see exactly how this can be used, let's look at the following example. So suppose in your organic chemistry course you conduct the thin layer chromatography technique and find that we have two compounds that separate. Now compound 1 travels a distance of 3 centimeters while compound 2 has traveled a distance of 7 centimeters from the bottom of our plate. Now if the solvent travels 10 centimeters from the bottom of the plate and the sample was spotted 1 centimeter above the bottom of the plate, find the retention factor of both compounds. So first let's draw our diagram that describes what is taking place. So we have our plastic plate the stationary phase. So we have product 1 and product 2. Now the distance from the bottom bottom of the plate to our solvent line is 10 centimeters. So that means because the distance from the bottom of the plate to our spot line is 1 centimeter, the distance that was traveled by our solvent can be obtained by taking 10 and subtracting 1. And likewise, to calculate the distance traveled by either one of the compounds, we take that distance and subtract one centimeter. 
So, the retention factor for compound one is the distance compound one traveled from the origin, from the spot line, so three minus one or two divided by the distance traveled by our solvent given by 10 minus one, so nine. So we have two divided by nine is the retention factor for compound one. Now, if we follow the same step for compound two, we get six over nine or two thirds. So because two ninths is lower than two thirds, that means that compound one has a greater attraction to the stationary phase to our plastic plate than compound two, which has a greater retention factor.